you may think that that is a given. It totally isn't with a lot of artists. I think I found a lot of artists do this and they keep things to themselves. Um, and I have a lot of problems with that, actually, and I wanted to change that. Um, the book is a labor of love. I'll just say, too, that uh, we didn't get an advance for the book. Um, it's, it's published by Intellect Books and then distributed by the University of Chicago Press. It's been sold out four times, and uh, it's in its, well, actually sold out three times. It's in its fourth printing. And uh, the 8% profit I get, we're splitting it. I'm splitting it with all my contributors. So even if we sold 15,000 books, we sold about 5,000 so far. We sold 15,000 books, it's $300 a piece. So I was just telling Jan, <laughs> I just got my first uh, royalty check, not royalty check, but sales check, or whatever that's called. I'm still learning what this is. This is my first book. Somebody out here knows a lot. You guys are coming here a lot more than I do about this. Um, but I just got my first check, and it's in pounds because the uh, publisher is in England. And so we divided it out with the fees and everything, $11 a piece. So I'm going to go home and write a 43 $11 checks. <laughs> it's very important that I do that because, I, I mean, that's our first, that was for 300, I don't remember how many books, I always forget, 358 books or something. Uh, so we'll catch up to that four, four or 5,000 mark. But even with that, it's, that's not the point. The point of this book is about giving to other artists to be able to allow for artists to sustain creative life and to also break down perceptions uh, of how people may look that they're doing well, whatever that means, or the, quote, success of something, of somebody. But then when you sort of peel back the onion, if you will, or the veils, and you'll see that the people who may appear to be successful are actually the same as those that are not successful. So everybody's on the same playing field because everyone is working their tails off, essentially. I believe that work is a privilege. I believe in hard work is a life. I, I believe that the artists have something magical within, we have so many tools within us that are magical that actually can apply to the rest of the world. And then I also believe that we are some of the fewest people, I said this on Bloomberg News, to these, all these business people who listen to this, we are some of the fewest people in the world that we actually do what we want to do. Right. Some part of the, our life. Mm -hmm. So that's just a roundabout and introduction, and I'm sorry I went on more no. than you asked, but that's how I selected these people. And these people are not difficult people, for the most part. I found a little bit more about them as I've taken this, this book tour. This is the uh, 26th stop it is on the 45 stop book tour. And on the book tour, some of these contributors I've taken along with me, and some of them uh, have surprised me with how difficult they've been in public. They didn't know that they were going to, I didn't know this was going to be this big of a, a hit. And they didn't either, but for the most part, they're very generous. In fact, if you ever wanted to reach out to any of them, you could reach out to them. Did you try to reach out to any of them? Actually, um, Gina Werfel was here. Oh, yeah, um, I just saw her. And she teaches at UC Davis, and she came to see uh, the current exhibition. Right. And she told us how um, you had, how she had a whole class of students working right. with, with your contributors. They um, contacted all of them. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, that was harder on me than anybody because I had offered and I will still do this, but I won't do it like I did before, where I have to then find their email addresses and ask them, can you please do this? That's like 40 times, you know, and then get a hold of them, et cetera. But other than that, it was great. They all have connected with students, which is great. I'm sorry. Well, no, you, well, you, you brought so many points that um, are really wonderful to talk about. And I, I want to start with, with the first, I think, major point that even when an artist looks like they have reached that pinnacle of success that we're all perhaps hoping for, I think many artists do, of right. having a great gallery in New York, and you've got the gallery and you have that, you're going to have shows there, and still that isn't enough. And I think that that is actually very reassuring for people who are here to know that the struggle is the commitment to the work still demands a whole range of other activities. And I think, you know, reading that 
from one artist to the next in this book, you see that um, there's there's one um, there's one wonderful piece here with Will Cotton. I think oh, he's great. He's great. He says, you know, he started working on fixing up a loft, and right. as he did it, he taught himself how to plumb, wiring. Um, putting up walls, and then he had a skill so that he could do this for others. Mm -hmm. And that even after he was with Mary Boom, he still was doing contract, you know, construction work, contract work, because he couldn't give it up. You, you know, you still need that kind of day job. You need that fallback, and it's a long time if it ever happens. But for the most part, artists are finding themselves with galleries over a long period of time needing to have um, some backup. You know, for the most part, they all keep their day jobs and they're in and out of teaching. And the range of, of, of work and activity is interesting. And one thing um, that struck me was that for many of these jobs, writing skills Okay. seem to be really crucial and it's not necessarily something that artists go into a life in art with writing skills. Could you maybe talk about that?